Hello guys, Duran slash Lawrence Wayne here, and I'm going to show you the interpreter or code runner. So this allows you to run user programs, programs that you can make yourself. I'll show you the source code for each of these programs I'm about to demonstrate right after I do. So in the apps folder, I have four little test programs that I made. They all end in .los, that's an executable. And now the file manager doesn't open every file as if it's a picture, so it opens these as programs. Now I'm going to open one and you're going to see a lot of debug information, and it's going to stay on the screen for two seconds. Well, usually programs start up lots faster, but I have that so I can see if everything's working and whether it's pausing, because sometimes if an app's incorrectly coded, it gets stuck in one of them. So all this usually happens a lot faster. So here's the little bomb application. Kind of lame. It was the, one of the first examples I got working. In proper examples, at least. So um, it can do a lot more than just printing text. And that part at the bottom, I'll show you what that's for later. Um, so buttons. This demonstrates touchscreen buttons. Now, when you push the little push me button, the button turns red, and it counts how many times you pushed it. Simple, right? The little exit button says it's done, it goes back to the home screen. Um, then paint, a little program Peter made, my friend, by the way, over Skype. I'll just demonstrate this to him what it does. Kind of draws a dotted line everywhere. A slight glitch with this program is that it doesn't detect when you're not touching it. And because it then tries to draw the line at negative one, negative one, this happens. So it kind of glitches out when you let go. So you don't let go. To stop the program, you have to move your finger over the stop button. And then lastly, foobar, which demonstrates the use of the bar at the bottom. So we have up, down, reset, and stop. That blue button over there is the system button. It will always be there, it always has to be there. It's kind of like a system restriction. So if I push up, the value goes up. If I push down, now it goes down, if you push reset, it clears the screen and puts the value there again. And then continue going down or back up. And clear the screen if it gets too full. You notice when I clear the screen, this bar like blinks because it's clearing the whole screen and it's putting the bar back. I'll make it clear up to just above the bar. Also, printing functions or anything that displays anything on the screen may go over the buttons then things get weird so I still need to fix that as well it's a lot of if statements for me and um, yes let's see how these applications work so let's begin with the bomb app Ooh, I'm not sure if my phone can concentrate on the screen well so here this initializes the number, the setup which is run once, it sets the number to 10. Then the loop, this runs for infinity until something else happens. So these, the void setup and loop are the default fun functions. You can leave out loop and it will just run setup and then end because it can't find loop. It might end in an error but it will end. So it prints the number, waits half a second, and decreases the number by one. I'm implementing number minus minus later. It's kind of hard to make a compiler, okay? And then checks if the number is zero. If not, we skip the if statement and we do the loop again. We print the number, delay halfway, and keep going. So if I run this program again, you'll see that it's subtracting every time. And once it's zero, then 
Wait, so it says explodes. Boom. Wait two seconds so you can see the explosion and then stop running the program. The other apps. Uh, let's demonstrate buttons if I still have it. Here. Yeah. So this is what makes buttons work. First you have to define the buttons. There's a variable again. You can't do int amount equals zero. That'll confuse the machine entirely with the compiler. And unless I'm not too sure, I've never tried it. Define press button and then the coordinates of this little button on the screen over here. Those are the coordinates. 1, 1, 1, 50, 25. It can probably be zero, 0, but I didn't risk it. And the exit button's location. This here is so that pressed one times does not appear on top of the press me button. And there's no println with no argument. That confuses the system again. So I have to do that. Amount equals zero, because this is the setup. It's what happens when it starts up. And then it defines the press me button and the exit button's location. So that's all you need to do to initialize the buttons. And then for loop, update button, press button. So this checks the press button. If it was pressed, currently it's E5 equals 1. But I'm going to make that a lot easier, user friendly later. That's the system variable E5. Amount equals amount plus 1. Pressed amount times. And then update the exit button. If it was pressed, we stop writing the program. Now this update thing also makes the button turn red. Both of them. And then lastly, I think, is the foobar. Now this is pretty interesting because the foobar app runs using interrupts. Now this bar at the bottom is called the foobar, as you may have guessed. Uh, in the description, I'll put why it's called that. It's kind of a long story. It's also kind of a pun. So, F bar, up, down, reset. So this defines the text in those little buttons. And then F bar functions, this sets the interrupts. So when up is pushed, you run up button, which is over here. So we're actually executing these functions when you click the little button down button and reset counter down button and reset counter so yes they are user functions and nothing happens in the loop but I could do something like run a game in the background and then when the buttons are pushed it'll stop whatever it was doing go to the function defined here so if it was the up button pushed and this function is run it'll just pause whatever it was doing run this and then when it's done running this little thing, it'll go back to whatever it was doing. So that's an interrupt, basically. And then these little print value, that's a user-defined function over here. And it just prints the value again. So print value and then count. The down button decreases the count and then prints it again. Up button increases it. Reset, clears the screen, and prints the value again. So up button increases it, down button decreases it, and reset, clears the screen, and puts the back number back. Simple. So that's what the interpreter currently does. It runs pretty fast because it compiles the code. Maybe I should show you what the compiled code looks like. Now you can't see this in a normal text editor, so you need a hex editor to see it properly. So I set it to decimal for my convenience. These are the commands on the left. They actually match up with this massive Excel table. They the command number here and the function here. Not all of them are implemented. Yes, much later, temporary, reserved, implemented. Yes, all of the ones that have nothing in it are not implemented. So there's still a whole lot to go, of course. And, of course, I haven't made all the functions yet. But, yeah, and then all your strings 
are stored over here with the command zero. So if this line, if there's zero here, it knows that the rest are strings. Then these numbers that look gibberish, up, down, reset, value in the little colon, is actually up, down, reset, and value. So you can see how that matches. Now you could go here and see that this 31 is a setup function or define function, 5 is a set function, 70 is fbar, 71 is fbar functions, then you'll see 39 which is close brackets, 31 which is define function again, that's the void setup and void loop. And I got a new message. But yeah, that's about it. I could take it could take ages for me to explain what all these other values do. Just know that they're arguments, aka the values in the brackets. Except for the strings. Those are references to the big string table over here. Big thing down here. So um, that's it I guess. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll make this interpreter do some cooler stuff in the meantime. Um, uh, you can give suggestions in the comments on what I should make it do next. Just nothing too advanced because I haven't implemented all the advanced functions yet. I'm getting to basic drawings and stuff. The game library I'll implement much later when other stuff starts working. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. If you like, comment, rate, subscribe and such. And bye!